young people want the challenge of being called to something more than just mediocrity. All young people, I think, have that deep desire to do something remarkable, to be someone remarkable. We need good men who are considering the call to step forward and not be afraid. Uh, men willing to give of themselves men willing to follow the call to try to say what is this um, something this sense of a uh, being led being drawn into a service there are guys that are that are probably being called not hearing well if we are priests are the altar Christus the other Christ who else but ourselves should be going out and like our Lord saying follow me and that one phrase has reverberated down through the centuries priesthood or religious life is a supernatural call. To lay down our lives so that others may have life. So to put one's own desires, one's own will aside and say, Lord, what do you want? I will place anything on the altar of sacrifice. We need men to give up their life for Jesus Christ. Now. that are out there, the louder the message will be. It's not natural to be a priest, you know, it's supernatural. So we've got to go out and fish for the people. We've got to take up Jesus on his word. I'll make you fishers of men. Vocation to the priesthood is counter-cultural. present culture is a noisy culture. We're loaded with TV, music, we're loaded with sound, we never get rest. We've got the computer, and it's distraction, distraction, distractions. Young people are entering into a society and into a culture not centered on God and on godly values. The battles that the young people have to face in our society, drugs, the immorality, the violence. I think people are searching after God, but they're looking in the wrong places. The greatest crisis right now in the world is the absence of God in our life. The world thinks of, you know, someone living celibate, you know, it mocks it, laughs at it, because their goal is do whatever you want, be free. Many young people today are fighting battles which myself and older generations never had to fight. If we have proper evangelization, then we have vocations. Where well, the church is important, the kids pick it up, like they pick up the language. Who's going to give the sacraments for the next generation? A culture and a culture affecting families um, lives further and further away from the Lord as the center of their life. It becomes harder and harder to, to hear that invitation and call from the Lord. If you look at nature and the way things grow, they grow in silence. If you look at the trees and the flowers, if you look even at human beings, we grow in silence, you know, and a vocation is very similar. A relationship with God is very similar, and it grows in silence in an environment where one's inner ears are open to hear God who only speaks in silence. The church was very important. There's daily mass in the family, at the rosary every night. It was just a strong Catholic family. I guess from the time I was very young, I wanted to be a priest. 
never thought of anything else. I uh, was a professional baseball player for eight years out of high school, which was a lot of fun for a kid from 18 to 26. And then I was a professional actor for the next 15 years. I'm not that I had great um, fame in either one, uh, but I think I had a taste of enough of it to know how dangerous it can be. When I was ordained in 2000, uh, you know, my nose hit the marble, uh, and I realized, my God, uh, who am I to receive this gift? It is an opportunity to stand for change and to effect change anywhere in the world, any part of the world. The Catholic priesthood is an instrument for the change that the world needs today. I actually have a couple of friends that are joining the priesthood and they're great people. I think that they are important because they are like teachers for us. I feel that they're just regular people, people who I can talk to whenever I have problems. It should be just a normal part of every male Catholic to consider the vocation as far as becoming a priest. We need the priest because uh, without the priest we won't have the Eucharist. In a sense they're role models that the youth can look up to. The world needs heroes. John Paul II remains, in death as he did in life, the model priest, the mentor, the example, the one to answer as he answered the call of Christ. Come, follow me, and when you do it, do not be afraid. was such a brilliant light, just shining in the world. And he was shining for the world, but he also shined for us, for seminarians, for priests, because he taught us how to be a priest. He was an actor, he was an athlete, he was good with people, he had a sense of humor, but with all these gifts he gave it completely to God. Set for us such an example that so many men were drawn to the seminary were encouraged, were given strength. People saw a man who was living his life to the full. He taught us that the priesthood was standing in the truth with love. He was the face of the Catholic priesthood in our world. And what a beautiful face he really was. I often think of John Paul II as a child. When his mother died, he went to a shrine and he said to the Blessed Mother, you must be my mother now. And he carried that into his priesthood. And so every priest needs to re-echo his words of Totus Tuus Maria. Because as Christ gave himself, his priesthood and his, and his victimhood to the Blessed Mother, so every priest needs to give his priesthood and his victimhood to the Blessed Mother. The works of the priest, uh, besides being a counselor, besides being a, a spiritual leader, is someone who, as St. Paul would say, would administer the mysteries of God, that he is the one who brings the holy sacraments into the life of God's people. When I say those words, this is my body given for you, I almost get trembly, you know, who am I to do this? What am I? I have the sacred powers, powers from God, to call down the Holy Spirit on bread and wine. And offering the blood of the Son of God to His Father for mercy, calling down upon the world the mercy of the Father as I raised that chalice, knowing that that chalice was filled with the blood that poured forth from his sacred heart. I can honestly say that I, I really want nothing else in life but to bring people to Jesus Christ. And each day, it actually, the gift becomes more beautiful and more brighter. It's a beautiful gift the Holy Priesthood. It speaks to the heart and the soul of every society and ministers to every human need. And wherever there is a human need, the Catholic priesthood is meaningful. The priesthood is a life of sacrifice, it's a life of service, because it's the life of our Lord. 
And so it's not simply a matter of uh, kneeling in the church all day and praying. It's rolling up one's sleeves and doing things for other people. That sacrificial life, that of giving their time, you know, completely to people, to hearing confessions, to saying mass, giving retreats, and completely joyful doing it. Quite frankly, a priest has to be all things to all people. At the most important moment of their life, you walk in a semi-stranger, but because you are a priest, you, you are part of their lives, you are part of their family. You cry with some people, you laugh with others. <laughs> you know, what a person goes through in a lifetime, we can go through in a day. Because at one moment, you need to be rejoicing with the couple you're wedding. Another moment, you have to have that joy of bringing this child to baptism. At the next moment, you have to be preparing the soul for death. Emergency, what is your location? I'm on Route 135. There's been an accident on the southbound side near exit 16. There's a kid lying in the road. Father James, can you hear me? blessing of Almighty God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Matthew, Matthew your sins are forgiven. sources on the ground, two young men have been taken to the hospital with injuries, while a third is feared dead after being thrown from his vehicle. What draws young people to be priests is a priest's example, to be a father to them, because you are the face of Christ. And when they say you, they see the church. And when they see the church, they see Christ. All young people, I think, have that deep desire to do something remarkable, to be someone remarkable. Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Our Lord told his apostles that they would become fishers of men. And so it is important that we accept that role and we go out and call people, perhaps even by name, individuals, and, and ask them if the Lord certainly is calling them to the holy priesthood. We talk about the sacrifices a priest has to make. When there's love, sacrifice is easy. 
I really feel that in order for me to be who I was created to be, this is what I had to do. Let people know how much God loves them, and that you're not there to dictate, you're not there to rule, but to serve. And I think that's the main point. Like Jesus laying down his life for all of us, we lay down our lives. The priesthood is tough, and it's for real men. You have to be a real man if you want to become a priest. guys, regular guys, uh, to come and follow him. When I came back to the Lord, that's where I found everything. That's where I found the treasure in the field. And it's worth selling everything to buy that field, to get that treasure, to get the pearl of great price hidden in that treasure box of the priesthood. You know, it's worth it all. <laughs>